Okay, I know I'm really milking it out here. Yet another one. But I thought I'd leave at this because this, this setup's a little better than my last. And I ended up frying my last transformer. And I'm not sure why. But you can see, I wish the video represented it better because the light is not lousy. I mean, it's it's pretty decent. It's, it's enough light with that sitting on a table that I can see objects on the ground. Like, I'm not going to see a resistor on the ground or something, but I'm definitely not going to trip on anything. It's a nice evening light. Uh, great, would be great in an RV close space. So, it's decent light. It's not just one watt of light. It's, it's better. As I walk around, I can, I can see everything on the counters and stuff. So, I, look, I hooked it up to the scope. And my scope probes aren't actually connected to the to the secondaries. One's my probe is, is is around a shielded wire and my ground's just kind of sitting over by the other end of the secondary. But it is an AC output. Quite smooth actually, I was quite surprised. Thought it'd be a dirtier signal than that. Um I could be wrong on this, but when I look at that I have 4.2 divisions as the width of one period of my wave and I'm over on um, 5 microseconds per division. I did some math and that worked out to 480 hertz or something. Battery sitting at 12.75. Now this time I'm running through a half ohm resistor uh, which changed the frequency just slightly but not much. Um, so through that half ohm resistor I'm reading um, 71 millivolts so you can pretty much double that. So it's about 142 milliamps on a battery sitting at 12.75 and what I'm doing differently this time is not much um, but I'm running it through an IRF 610 instead of the RFP 40 N10 and the reason being was in this exact same setup the RFP 40 N10 draws about 200 milliamps with not a lot of extra discernible brightness and it, it starts getting hot now this one I have on a heat sink, but it's almost like you wouldn't need it. Like there's, it might be 75, 80 degrees. It's hard to tell whether it's warmer than the room kind of thing. It's not much there. And I'm back on the little 300 milliamp, six volt transformer. But that's kind of cool in a sense because that's what you're gonna find like, you know, in the dumper at the thrift store or something, you know, like there's just a million of those things around. And I have two 103s in parallel. So what's that, a couple hundred nanofarad or a .02 microfarad. And then I'm running the two in series off of pin two again. Z2 has a setup where you run your 100 ohm resistor there out of pin 3 over to the gate and then you connect your drain directly to positive and then you run your um, your source uh, off the source pin through the, the primary and then to negative and he said that it's not a true AC circuit like this one, but when I did that, it just it just started to climb up and and draw the amps and and didn't didn't fly. So if you get that one going, you see you figured that it would go brighter, but that it wouldn't be true AC. But one of the things I do like about this is the true AC. 
So, because uh, then these I build so that I can have a, a solar panel in one location and a battery and then put the light wherever I want it. Because I can run 40 feet of cable or whatever, you know, put it on the corner of the building, but get the panel over where the sun is, get the battery close to that. Alrighty, thanks for watching.